Welcome everyone to our new series of home friendship groups. And um, I know in the last couple of weeks, we've been studying the four pillars of the church or of our Christian life. And number one is prayer. That's right. Number two is the importance of reading the Word of God, but not just reading, obeying the Word of God and applying it to our lives. And number three, the importance of fellowship. And yes, we have missed being with one another, but it's important that we get together. And even the Bible says, and so much the more as we see the day of the Lord approaching, when the evil is in the day, we need to be together to encourage one another. And then number four is personal involvement. How can I, what can I do to see the kingdom of God grow in my life and in the life of others. So great pillars and we pillars are there. You know, this pillar here with the wood is not just there to look decorative. That is actually holding up a lot of weight. So pillars are very, very important in our life because when all else fails, it's the pillars that will hold us together. So this year, the year of 2022. What does it have in store for us? We really don't know. We don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen. But you know what? We who love the Lord, we have such a security. We know who holds our future. And I thank God for that. So let me ask you, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Next question did you keep them? Apparently, gyms, and this was in my first of the year Bible devotion, gymnasiums on the 1st of January, they bring in lots and lots of new equipment because everybody's going to get fit. The place is packed. Many people make resolutions to attend the gym on a regular basis and they work hard for a few days. And then the statistics say that about day seven to 10, people have given up their New Year resolution. And the gym begins to move the equipment out and everything returns to normal. Usually we make resolutions or New Year's resolutions because we want some things to change in our life, in our workplace, in our family, we just don't want same, same for this year. So we try to prioritise the important things in our life and keep the main thing, the main thing. So as we start this new series, and this series is called I Resolve. And my subject, or the four subjects that we'll do is I resolve to know, I resolve to grow, I resolve to show and I resolve to go. And my subject is to know. So before I start, let's just pray together that God would use me to help you and encourage you to desire to, to know who our God is and all His greatness. Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight that we can gather in this place together, Lord. And as we open up your word tonight, Lord, I pray that the words would come alive, but it wouldn't just be words, but Lord, it would be your spirit coming alive in our life. Oh God, we want to know you more and more. That wants to be our desire for 2022, that we would know you, Lord. And whatever it takes for us to get to know you, we want to resolve to know you. So thank you, Lord, for this night in Jesus' name. Amen. So my subject, to know. And it's not academic, it's not at all. Because when we know something, we know something, okay? We know it. Many years ago, when I first experienced the love of God and how much God loved me, not being raised in church, and my grandfather was probably the only real Christian influence for a very short time in my life. And I was invited to a house meeting 
it was a church that met in the house. And I was not known to anyone, particularly in attendance, except the person that invited me. And the preacher from his wheelchair, he preached on John chapter 10. Now, some of you may know I was raised country areas and farming and doing all that sort of thing is quite familiar to me. So he preached on John chapter 10, relating the beautiful relationship of a shepherd with his sheep. And John John chapter 10 says, he knows his sheep. This is the good shepherd. And that good shepherd is God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And his sheep, and they were the people, not sheep, but us. We would know his voice. And I was moved because I wanted to know this good shepherd. And then the message in tongues came. And honestly, because the folks were mostly South African people, I thought they were just speaking amongst themselves. But then the interpretation came, as I now know, and it showed and revealed to me the secrets that I had hidden in my life and in my heart. It showed me how much God really loved me and cared for me. He knew my voice. He knew where I was right there and then. So that night I determined or I resolved that I was going to know that good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And here I am many years down the road And I still have a desire to know him. To know him is to love him. To know him is to worship him. The Apostle Paul also experienced something very heart-rending and heart-changing. In Acts chapter 9, he was on the road to Damascus. And we all know this story. And the light shone from heaven and he fell down. And those with Saul, they heard a voice. But they didn't see anyone and they led him into the town and he was blind for three days and he didn't eat or drink, the Bible says. But then God spoke to Ananias and he said, Ananias, who was very nervous because he knew Saul's reputation. The Lord said, Ananias, go over to the straight street, to the house of Judas and speak to Saul. And in verse nine of uh, verse eleven of chapter nine, but the Lord said to Ananias, "Go, for he Saul, who later became Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel." And verse sixteen it says, "And I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake." After this, in verse 20, straight away, Saul, who became Paul, preached Christ, the Son of God. And he suffered many things. But you know what? He He didn't give up because he suffered many things. He was confident because he knew his God. And we can be so confident when we know our God because we know the Scripture says He will never leave us nor forsake us. When we go through the waters, He will be with us. When we go through the fires, He will be with us. We, they will not overcome us. And we see that throughout the Scriptures. So in Philippians chapter 3, Paul, he wrote much of the New Testament letters And the New Living Translation says, in chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised Him from the dead. I want to suffer with Him, sharing in His death, so that one day, that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. But the Amplified Chapter 3, verse 10 and 11 of Philippians. And this, so that I may know Him experientially, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with Him, understanding the remarkable 
wonders of his person more completely and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, that I may share the fellowship of his sufferings, being continually conformed inwardly to his likeness, to his death, dying as he did, so that I may obtain the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. Apostle Paul, amazing, amazing guy. Born with so many privileges, very well educated. He could have done anything. And we know what he was doing before the Lord spoke to him. He claimed that he had many things in his life he could trust. But in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, it says, I count all those things loss for the excellency, the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is by the law, but the righteousness of God by faith. Verse 10 opens with the words that I may know him. And that's what our study is about tonight, resolving, determined to know him. Amen. So in 2022, we are going to know him more than we knew him last year. And Paul had many things he needed to do. He needed to forget the past. He needed to reach forward. He needed to press toward the mark. But above all, the Apostle Paul resolved to know the Lord above all else. And the reason that so many of our new, new Year resolutions don't work for us or last is that when we move on into the year, life happens. Life gets busy and we begin to move back into our old habits, same old, same old, the familiar ruts. Distractions come along. So tonight... Can I ask two questions? What spiritual goals or resolutions have you made? What was, what was foremost in your mind this year as we had the crossover service? That you would know Jesus more? And the second question is, those things that you resolved to do, are you keeping them? Or have you been distracted along the way? And if you haven't made any New Year's resolutions or result, yes, resolutions, then maybe tonight you can take a spiritual inventory and of your life and determine the areas where you need to grow. And next week we will learn about what it is to grow and how we can grow. We can't stay the same. If we are not moving forward, we will go backwards. We may be doing well in some areas, but there are other areas that we need to grow in. It's an ever-changing life, okay? So tonight, let it be resolved. Let you resolve, let me resolve, like the Apostle Paul, that we will know him that we will have that intimate relationship with him. We will even know his heartbeat. That's what it's about. When you resolve to know someone, you know their heartbeat. You know what makes them happy. You know what makes them sad. You know what hurts them because we know them. The Apostle Paul expressed a passion and was, more, was determined that knowing Jesus was the most important thing that he can do in his life. And Daniel chapter 30, 11, verse 32, one of my favourite scriptures. But they, but they that do know their God, not just knowing about God, but they that know His heartbeat, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And I like to say tonight that if God is on your side, then what can we fail? How can we fail? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3, a great man. 
you know, one day when I get to meet this guy, he's got it right. Let's read, and I'm going to read from the new King James. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, he made a gold image. Its height was 60 cubits and its width was six cubits. Sounds like it was enormous. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word and gathered all the the important people. And you can read it for yourself. The governors and the counsellors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, all the officials of the province. He wanted them all to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So they came. And it goes on and tells you all these people that came. To you, then a herald cried aloud. To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn or the flute, the harp, the lyre, the psaltery, the cymbal, symphony, with all kinds of music, you will fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And verse six, it says, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the burning furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the, and in symphony, with all kinds of music, all the people of the nations and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But Daniel and his friends, they disobeyed the king. Therefore, at that certain time, Chaldeans, the self-righteous ones, came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. But there are certain Jews, verse 12, whom you have set over affairs. They're pretty important people working for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods, nor worship the gold image which you have set up. Verse 13, then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to him. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the same time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the psaltery, the harp in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship which I have, um, worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you will be cast immediately into the midst of the fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Question from Nebuchadnezzar to those young men. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that, it is the case, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and He will deliver us from your hands. They knew their God. But if not, let it be known unto you. This is verse 18. O King, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Wow. They had resolved they were not going to bow down or be distracted. We may not have idols erected. We may not have threats made to us, but there are distractions everywhere. Voices calling to us, 
requiring our attention. And some of the things that, you know, I can think of are like friends and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. They consume our time. They become distractions to some of us and we forget the most important things. But we need to be like those boys, not bow the knee, but standing strong in our determinations, standing strong in our resolutions. I remember many years ago when we were in the US, there was a church that had grown and it was in San Francisco and the church was blooming and blossoming and many people were coming to the Lord and some of the, the pastor's friends said to him, what do you attribute your growth to? And he said to them, he said, well, the truth be known that when you are out after service, going and feasting and you know, fellowshipping and with others, I go to the throne room. And we stayed with this pastor. And at three or four o'clock in the morning, he called us. We went to the prayer room with him. He had this, he was very eccentric and, you know, quite a different type of character. But that's where he knew how to connect with God. And he wasn't going to be distracted with fellowship, even though he loved those people. He wasn't going to allow that to distract him. So we need to be like that as well. Intimacy is in the knowing who God is. Not just on the good days. Not just on the bad days. Not when we have need. Not just because we have needs. But living a life of worship in spirit and in truth. That's what it's about. It's living that life of worship because God is God. But the enemy has an agenda to distract us and sometimes we do get caught away. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, The God, small g, of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not lest they see the glorious light of the gospel. What is it going to take for us to be able to show forth the greatness of God, our God to a, to a people whose minds are blinded? We need to pray. We need to see God move. We need to worship God and allow Him to move. We need to make Him big in the eyes of those who need to know our God. The devil wants to mess with our minds. We see it today. The devil is wreaking havoc. And, you know, I, I harp on this. The government is spending so much money because of people's mental health. But we know that they know they need a God who will set them free. The strength of our walk with God is not about faith. Every one of us, believer or non-believer, have a measure of faith. To everyone is given a measure of faith. It is not in our believing and the miracles that we see. It is about knowing God and our worship unto Him for who He is and not for what He does. It's about getting into the throne room and worshipping Him. The Apostle Paul declares he didn't come with fancy words, according to the New, Triving, New Living Translation. He said, my message and my preaching is very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I rely on the power of the Spirit of God. And that's what we need to see in our life, in the lives of those who preach from the pulpit and those those of us who witness, we need to see and rely on the power of the Spirit of God to bring those words alive in the people that we speak to. That is what the Scripture means when it says, No eye hath seen, no ear hath heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But as the Apostle Paul said, Above all else, I must know Him. Some goals that we can resolve to do is read the Word of God every day and see the wonders of His love. 
Pray every day. Draw close. Have a time of devotion and worship every day. It may require some of us to get up half an hour earlier just to spend time in the presence of God seeking His face. What about fasting? Fasting helps us to deny the flesh and focus on the things that are eternal. Our flesh is wonderful. It's a wonderful tool, but it's a dreadful master. And sometimes we need to deny it. Oh, well, let me sleep half an hour more. Oh, oh. guilty. (laughs) But you know what? If we would get up and go into the presence of the Lord, just take that time. If you've got a place in your house where you go and you seek His face and worship Him for who He is. Matthew chapter 6 supports fasting. Verse 16, it says, when you fast, not if, it's when. It's not for us to tell everybody that we're fasting, but when we fast unto God, He sees and the rewards will come. It's about self-denial. Why? That we may know Him and bring ourselves closer and into His presence. Some areas, and I know next week we're going to learn a lot more about growing, but some areas that we need to grow in and be like the Lord are areas of things of how we view people. Some people, and you know, we have that negative bent in life. We see everything through negative eyes. We see people as being negative. We, so everything is negative. But some of us have tried to change that, change our thought life. But we always seem to default back. The Word of God has the remedy for that. Tonight, we need to believe what the Word of God says. The Apostle Paul says we can change our thinking and he gives us the best remedy in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And he says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. He's taught them many things. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honourable, what is right, what is pure, lovely and admirable. Think about those things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So if you have that negative bent, our God can help us change our negative thinking to the way that the Lord would want us to think. What about our speech? The Bible tells us that the tongue has incredible power. It's a little member, but it has incredible power. We can use our tongue to bring blessings in life and curses. The saying that says, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me is simply not true. Our tongues can be one of the most difficult things to control and leave us with great regret if we use our words to hurt. But the Word of God gives us hope when we know Jesus, because that's the way He would speak, positive. He would speak love into people's lives. So tonight there is hope. Every one of us can change if we would resolve to know Him and the power of His resurrection life. When you know Him, you know that He, that with His help, anything that comes our way, it's okay. Like righteous Job, oh my goodness, the things that Job went through. He walked before the Lord. He was a servant of the Lord. He was an upright man and God was very pleased with Job's worship. Even God bragged on him. Have you seen my servant Job? Although Job lost many of his judgmental friends over that time of anguish that he was going through. Some of his friends said, curse God and die. What's God done for you? Look. But he said confidently, because he knew his God. He said, when God has finished with me or when, I has, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. 
So brothers and sisters tonight, we don't have to worry about what comes our way when we know that our God will never leave us nor forsake us. He will go before us. He will go behind us. Amen. So he did not allow the distractions to interrupt his relationship or his fellowship or his walk with God. And we need to do the same. As the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and he suffered many things, and lest I should be exalted above measure, New King James Version, by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. This thorn in the flesh was sent to distract him. And concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that he would take it from me. And the Lord responded, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, Paul said, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for his sake, for my Lord's sake, he says. For when I am strong, when I am weak, I am strong in his love, in his mercy, because I know my God is with me. The Lord says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power, he says, is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That thorn in the flesh sent to distract him, but it pushed him closer to the Lord, made him rely on God's strength to overcome. So knowing God is different about no, from knowing about God. When you know God, you are energised and you are motivated to worship Him for His cause and commit your life to Him because you know that He is worthy and He is good. It's not enough just to know God but it's, we must make God known to others, the hope that is within us. And I've just been through a very sad time and I've seen sometimes what people go through and how their lives are depraved because they do not know God. But you know, people say, what is it about you? It's because we know our God. He's, he's more than able. So I want to finish this study with the book of Daniel. What it says in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, they that do know their God shall be strong, shall be confident and they shall do exploits. There is no fear when you know God is with you. So one of the first steps to knowing God, of course, is reading the Word of God. Within the pages of the Word of God, you can read His heartbeat, His love for people, His compassion for people, the things that He did to help people. So we need our daily bread. Bread, B, Bible, reading, enriches any day. So take your daily bread, have Bible reading because it will enrich your, your life every day. So next week, knowing is about growing. And you will learn that with God, we have to grow. So let's be intentional this year and enjoy these studies. We will know Him who loved us and gave His life for us. The one who took our sins away, heals us and forgives us walks with us, He never leaves us nor forsakes us. The one who encourages us to be strong and not fear. He encourages us to be courageous 
because he will not leave us nor forsake us. And he fills us with the Holy Spirit of promise. He gives us peace. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. And John 15, 16 says, we didn't choose him, but he chose us. So tonight, those of us, let's resolve to know him because he chose us for a special purpose. Amen. So let's know and grow and go. I can't think of the other one. And to show, yes, in 2022. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for Your Word that is sent to us to encourage us. We thank You, Lord, that You bring life through Your Word into our hearts, Lord. When Your Word is spoken, Lord, it divides and takes away the distractions of this world and helps us to focus on You. I pray, Lord, those of us tonight, we will resolve to know You more. In Jesus' Name, Amen.